Good morning, everyone. So I'm on my way to the Fiddle Project, also known as Crown Bottling Company. But uh, we're going to do a little dozer work today. Last time y'all were here, there was nothing here, and I hadn't filmed there since. There was a rock crusher running in, in the back corner of the property, crushing up rock, making crusher run and clean stone. And I'd done some drawing footage of that a while. Oh, that, was a, that was a while back. So you're probably a subscriber to the channel if you remember that. But this is where that's where I'm going. I may stick a clip of that rock crusher in there right quick. All right, so we'll jump back to June 30th of 2021 here. And uh, this is some drawing footage I took when this job was first starting up. We're gonna look around across the building pad here. First, we're gonna stop off and look at, uh, that's press glass, which was the big glass factory that we did a few years ago. And then the uh, pad to your to the right in the right lower corner which i'm gonna pan around to here looking at the water tower in the uh in the distance there we did the grading for that water tower also but uh here's the uh job site that i'm heading to now And we got a rock crusher running. Not us, but uh, I'm not sure who. They brought these people in. It wasn't the grading contractors doing this. But they hired this company to come in and crush the rock. So yeah, this is what I wanted to show y'all. Right quick, same job. Grading. They did the building pad and, and 
got it rough graded and we're doing all the all the parking lot areas grass areas and inside the curves and stuff like that Try, just trying to get it finished up and a lot of places they've been uh, all, all the parking lots are concrete so we've been grading for the parking lots and they've been pouring concrete right on our butts but uh, that was interesting last week They, I was I was grading an area last week, and they were putting forms up about one foot from where I had, from where I was still grading. And I was having to drive around the forms. I mean, I had what they were forming on grade, barely, barely had it rolled. And they was putting forms up, and I was working right beside of them as they were putting forms up. And concrete trucks were already putting concrete in. It was crazy. It was pump truck two concrete trucks at the time dumping into the pump truck um, and uh, had three gravel trucks coming in there bringing me stone and it was all on one little tiny road so it was this everybody was trying to get in and out in and out and then i was trying to work and roll and had a guy rolling for me it was uh it was kind of a nightmare but we got through it then we went around to the back of the building now we just did lazy great <laughs> we're just back there chilling now with a ride back and forth trying to get some dirt on great so not quite as stressful it's been a lot more exciting to film the stressful parts but anyway all right well, we'll see y'all a little bit what you say much, you. might do some filming today pretty fine What you doing? I was thinking about taking the grader around there and blading the road around back. Okay. I guess we'll go over there and try to, Doug's bringing some risers. Try to raise them up, finish that area back there. All right. <clears throat> I was gonna ride through and look at this. All right, sounds good. Well, here's where we was working last week. I thought I'd show you. Concrete pad goes all the way up to the building and all the way down to the curb, down to the fence line. And, and then they poured a strip right here along this building. And then right here is where I was, they were putting forms up and I was still trying to grade. I had this on grade. But I was trying to get this road graded so people could get through here because it goes to the main parking lot right now where everybody that works in here is parking over here also. So I had all that traffic coming in and out. This right here was supposed to got poured too, but there's a conduit that needs, the conduit sleeve's got to go in there and it didn't get done yet. yeah all concrete parking lots anyway where i'm working at is on the other side of the building so we'll run back over there and get the dozer fired up all right so we on the other side of the building now there's the building <clears throat> coming up on the area we're working on right I don't know if you would call it an island it's right up against the building it's going to be a grass area I need to pull up here to this dozer and grease it get it running and grease it check the antifreeze we just worked on some antifreeze leaks on it had some massive antifreeze leaks get my phone all right Okay, I got my grease over here. The darn thing is about out of grease. I need to make an updated grease gun video. You know how to check how much grease is in a grease gun, right? Pull that out. That's your gauge. If it had more in it, it'd come on out. But uh, the last grease gun video I did, 
it's got a lot of views, but I was just, I made it for somebody specifically and I was being silly and stupid. I need to make a serious grease gun video, but I think that one has helped a lot of people out cause I, I bleed my grease guns may be different than some people do and it works really good, so. All right, let's check the antifreeze. Oh, like I said, we've been having some leakage on this dozer and, all oh, right, looks like it stayed full. I brought a pressure, uh, you can look in there and see that it's, it's right above this line right here. I brought a, a pressure tester out here and hooked to it and pressurized it and figured out that the top radiator hose was leaking massively. Yeah, she needs a little bit of oil right on the low mark. I ain't figured out why, but this dozer, ever since it was new, has always got oil all over it right here and then dust sticks to it everywhere around this fill and dipstick. Not exactly sure what the deal is with that. It's like it leaks out of the, the fill cap or something. Check it. I'm gonna check it again here. Sometimes, apparently not on this one, but sometimes on the on the some of the cat machines we have. Let's see if I got some oil. If not, Dad'll have some. I know I had some, but I might have used it and forgot to refill it. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, on some of the older cat machines. You pull the dipstick out once and look at it and it'll be low. Stick the dipstick back in the second time and uh, check it, it'll be good. It's like the dipstick, yeah, that's empty. That's real good, let's put empty jugs back in here. Oh, and this one's empty too, that's great. Okay, is this empty too? Not right, not quite. I do have some chainsaw I could put in it. <laughs> yeah, it's hauling around a bunch of empty jugs. That does a lot of good, don't it? Probably got an empty fire extinguisher. No, it's charged. Okay. Anyway, I'm gonna run back over to Dad and and get some oil. We'll leave all that stuff sitting there. If hopefully somebody won't steal my grease gun. I love them Dewalt battery grease guns. They will pump grease forever with the lithium battery before they go dead. Uh, all right. I have not went and got my oil yet, but I wanted to talk about this grade a little bit here. Um, we wanted it. The subgrade is going to be topsoil on this, so we had we have to put four inches of topsoil. So the subgrade has to be four inches down below everything at the moment. And so I actually did the model on this little area here because nothing on the model that was made for this place is correct. I don't know what happened, but everything is is messed up. And I'm talking about the GPS model. The GPS model is. It's based off the plans for the job and you send the plans off to a guy and it wasn't his fault. He, did, he followed the plans, but they just smooth it up for, to be able to put it in the dozer GPS system and make it, uh, just makes it work with the dozer, makes it compatible with the dozer and the GPS system where as before, it's just a CAD file and the CAD file is not compatible with uh, the dozer so you send it off we send it off to a guy you can do it yourself if you have the software but we send it off to a guy because he's professional and he does a good job and and it's, it didn't have anything to do with him it's just our job those plans on this job are screwed up so anyway I had to make a model for this area because nothing matched basically I took the rover which is the handheld GPS I went around all this curb, got shots like uh, topo shots, and I got topo shots on the structure we had to match to, and then we had a problem. We couldn't get up here near the building. So 
the GPS will not work up close to a tall building like this. So what we had to do was set up a laser and shoot the building we're, and uh, figure out where we wanted it. Then we wanted a 2% slope and uh, we put that into a slope laser and then we drove some stakes out here where the GPS would work on grade and got topo shots on them. So basically my GPS will work within about 15 feet of this building and then it shuts off. So in order to get the rest of it, we we're having to use a slope laser or at certain times of the day, the GPS will work. And I built a model in the dozer that's different just for this area, but only works when the GPS, like at different times of the day, the GPS will work in different areas. And at it, and it's certain times of the day, you can get all the way up to this building with the dozer, but not necessarily the rover. The antennas on the dozer are a lot higher than the rover. So I know all this is maybe confusing to some of y'all, but hopefully it makes a little bit of sense. Uh, you know, GPS has to have a view of the sky. And as the world turns, you get different views of the sky, which gives you different views of different satellites. And, and sometimes the satellites reach up in here and sometimes they don't. It seems like around two to three o'clock, the satellite service gets terrible. Um, it wouldn't even reach to this, to this swell in the middle here, uh, which this swell in the middle here threw me for a loop. Um, because when I, the first model I made on this did not have it. And I had shot around that thing, shot both sides, and I did not shoot any shots in the middle. And I'm like, I made the model and I looked at the contour lines and the whole thing was just sloped over here to the curb until it got down there to the drop inlet. And then it, there was a, a bold out area there. And I thought, well, that's good, but all this water up here needs to go down there too, but it's just sloping over here. So I ended up having to go back and uh, think about it a little bit and I ended up shooting one more shot and I made a line from up there down to there with the GPS. Just just uh, took, a, took the calculator, it's got like a calculator wizard thing. Took two points and made a line between them and made this swell with that line and it worked out pretty good. I, I know it might not make any sense to you, but it worked out better than I thought it would. Basically what it done is it made, took two points, made a line straight through it, straight to that structure. Cause I had a point on that structure already and I used one of them. Had a point up here to grade I want it to go at. It made a straight line and then I incorporated it into that model and all the, uh, made all the contours go to that line, which makes the water run to the center there, to that swell. It made, basically the line made the swell. I don't know how to explain it any better than that. Let's go find some oil. Hey, I've been drinking. I drank two bottles. One had water and one had coffee. <laughs> Better clean that off for them. I don't understand why it gets so nasty right here. I guess this is where the oil goes. Guess a blow by tube. Let you come up there or something. Must do it. Anyway. The way it's been since it was brand new. Below the road. I don't know if I'm trying to follow those. Maybe grade is good. Alright, let's see if it'll crank. I know it'll crank.
All the glow plugs came on. What the heck? We'll turn the GPS on because we'll be using it. And, geez, the windows are terrible. And this one. No. That just makes it go faster. Hold on. This one. We'll cut it off. Yeah. There we go. And that warm up and need some defrost. Defrost. Which that doesn't actually do anything but turn the compressor on. Either way works. <laughs> go ahead and turn the heat all up. It ain't that cold, but help burn all this moisture off. Oh wait, you gotta turn on the fan, dummy. <clears throat> all right. I like to wipe my zerks off. These right here are for the blade, the main C-frame. And then one of them is track osculation. I have no idea which one to be. Oh, it's still a little old there. One over here everybody forgets about. It's right here. You think this is a track tensioning one, but it's not. This is actually for more of the osculation of the of the tracks. So you gotta remember to get these. Very too hot in here. Turn the air conditioner on. All right, I got to swipe my blade back and forth here to get my blade heading initialized on the GPS. Got it. Calibrates the IMU with the blade. Speaking of calibrating IMUs, my drone, I brought my drone. I was gonna set it up. I was gonna take off a minute ago and it wants to calibrate the IMU. So I'm like, all right, calibrate. And then 10 minutes later, I'm still calibrating. I'm like, all right, so we're on step two of five. It's been 10 minutes. Okay. Hopefully we'll just do this some other day. <laughs> so as I was talking about earlier, I am on a negative, negative four inch offset, so which is a negative 0.33 on the GPS. And then I'm gonna put topsoil back on this. I think everything has been cut below the four inch and basically what I got left to do now is they're gonna be hauling me some dirt. They're loading it right now. I'm just double checking 
because I was struggling getting uh, GPS signal uh, Friday when I was here. Today is uh, Monday, the day after New Year's Day, so it's January 2nd. Just doing a little double check in here. <clears throat> Make sure everything's cut down below four inches, and then they're going. Uh, I've got places that are still low, like right here beside this truck. I need to get it out of the way. This Arctic truck is from side of me here. It's got to move. I need to go see if it'll crank. Yeah, this one's just full of trash. You can't get in it. Some of them start with ether and some of them don't, don't need ether. Apparently this one don't need it. Only 8,900 hours on it. Here's a load of dirt. Put it right here in front of me.
this dirt might fill up against the building. Don't have enough dirt up against the building yet by a long shot. Got this little excavator up here that working on raising these structures up to the grade at the right grade. They're all too low. I might go over here to my truck and try to calibrate my IMU on my drone again. It's kind of irritating me that it just doesn't, doesn't want to work. One problem is my batteries aren't fully charged and that might be making it mad. If you don't use the drone, even if you leave the batteries on the charger, if you don't use the drone and to unplug the charger, plug it back in right before you're going to use it. The battery's discharged to like half. Which sucks. 